Hey, what's going on? This is Troy, and this is the Planet 76 Podcast, your source for Sixers news, highlights, hot takes, and more. Welcome to the show. Welcome, everybody, to Planet 76, a podcast about the Philadelphia 76ers. And I'm your one of your hosts, Troy. I've got Michael with me, and uh, we are here to talk Sixers. Um, man, it's been a week since our last episode, and a lot has transpired, like two Sixers losses in games four and five to put us down three to two. Uh, we are not happy. We're going to go into great detail about why we're yeah. not happy. But if this is your first time listening to Planet yeah. 76, hit subscribe, whatever platform you're on. Hey, if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to our channel there. Follow us on Instagram at Planet 76 Podcast, yes. and uh, just make sure you keep up with the show. And uh, with that, I mean, usually we have like a, an outline for how our episodes roll. Tonight, I don't know if that's going to be the case as we kind of break down game five and just kind of I don't know if this episode warrants an outline, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to let it roll, and so uh, we'll see how this goes. Michael, take it away. Well, I just want to start with saying that not only did the Sixers lose game four, they lost game five horribly, horribly. Game four was pretty bad as well, but... Game 5 is obviously what we're going to be focusing on in this episode. And I was talking to Troy before we started recording, and he was asking me how I felt during the whole, you know, how when everything went down with the Sixers blowing the lead. And I literally just said, just frustrated, kind of shocked, honestly, because I didn't expect it to happen. When when you're the Sixers and you have a 20-point lead, and if you're watching the game, you expect that lead to get to get blown because the Sixers are notorious for blowing leads and that's what we saw in game five last night and it's just uh, there's just a lot and I, I, I'm just gonna like off the bat I mean if, if we're gonna place any blame I think I think most of it should go on Simmons and Harris secondarily I think uh, the blame should go to Doc Rivers because number one I mean, he was still playing the bench units for a very large chunks of time. Yes, they were up 20, but have we have we not learned by now that all bench units do not yeah. work? And okay, yeah. having a starter in the mix is, is cool, but it's not you can't have four or five players from the bench in at the same time. You need some sort of consistent option on offense, and nobody off the bench has been that for any large chunk of time. And that's why I blame Doc, and just he's there's a bunch of stats going around today, and Doc Rivers has like four blown leads in the postseason of of a large chunk of points, and that's why yeah. I blame Doc. I mean, that's that, that's who I would blame after Simmons and Harris, but we'll get into those two because they are not. I'm not letting either of them slide. It's not happening. <laughs> it's not happening, dude. Yeah, um, it, it's so tough to know where to start with everything, and uh, but I think we started at a good place. Tobias, Ben, and Doc Rivers. So Doc Rivers, that's that was the, that was floating around. Um, there's been eight leads of 16 plus or more that have been blown over the course of the last two postseasons. Just two postseasons, eight times a lead has been blown of 16 plus, and Doc Rivers has five of those. Oh my god! Two of those happening here in the last uh, 72 hours or whatever. Um, so, <laughs> not a great feeling uh, to be on that side of it. I remember last year I was making fun of Doc Rivers when he was on the Clippers, like, "Yeah, he's blown the most three-one leads in NBA history. Look at this guy, and now he's on our team." <laughs> oh man, just you really. I don't have I don't have any words. <laughs> I have no words. Episode's <laughs> over. <laughs> <I'm dying>. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard, dude. I don't oh know. Like gosh. I don't know where to go. I only um, like I made a post today on Instagram at like eleven AM and I was like, I'm not this is all I'm posting today. Like I don't I have nothing really else to say, honestly. Like this is it for the day. Sorry guys. This is it. Yeah, I was just like, I'm done. <laughs> did you post last night? I did and I was just like Did you I forget exactly what I said, but basically like this is absolutely atrocious, and this. Sucks. Well, I think I think it took you a while last night. Yeah, Normally it did. You're, you're pretty on top. I was, it like, took quick. me like an and hour. I knew you were like delayed like, for a reason. <laughs> oh, man. 
I had to get I had to gather my thoughts, dude. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I figured. I figured that's exactly what it was. So, um, we'll get to game five here in a second. Let's take a pause there. Um, and just for Sixers fans that, you know, hey, maybe you missed a game. Hey, maybe you, you forget what happened. I've got a brief summary written about each game uh, to maybe jog your memory a little bit. So game one, Hawks dominated. Sixers had a comeback late. It wasn't enough. That was game one in a nutshell. Game two was the Shake Milton game. He came in in the third quarter, took over things, uh, had a huge run himself, along with a couple of assists to White Howard early fourth to put game two away in the Sixers' favor. Then game three, which was last Friday night, coming up on a week ago, uh, I thought that was our most complete game. That was a um, fantastic start to finish. game. Fantastic. It was awesome. Well-rounded win. Awesome. Yeah. We had we had six guys in that game in double yep. figures. Um, very balanced attack. We we On our last episode, we were like, we can't rely on Joel Embiid. And then the next night, we looked like geniuses because mm-hmm. Joel Embiid only had 13, 14 shot attempts. Game three should have been a real blueprint as to – yeah, how the Sixers should play the rest of the series, and they just they did the total opposite. Yeah, yeah, and then Game Four on, jeez, uh, what day was that? I don't even know. Monday. Game Four must have been Monday. Yes. Yeah, Monday. Uh, Embiid's worst game of the postseason, easily. Um, he just didn't look right all night. Um, primarily in the second half, going 0 for 12. Yes, 0 for 12 from the field. Yeah. Um, the Sixers as a whole had 38 points in the second half. That's not going to win you a lot of games. Um, something else that was interesting, this was a three-point loss for the Sixers, but the Hawks had 16 more shot attempts from the field, and it's not like, well, the Sixers were getting to the line a lot more. They had the exact same amount of free throws. So um, if you get 16 more shots than the other team in a close game, that's like the difference maker because if we had 16 chances at that last possession, I think we would have made a three yeah. eventually. Uh, and, and Trey Young – Credit to him, an 18 assist, two turnover game. That's good for a nine to one assist to turnover Jeez. ratio. Um, pretty solid performance there. Um, and that was a, that was a blown lead. What were we up? 16, 17, 18. In that one, um, kind of just collapsed. But that was nothing compared to Game Five, uh, where we choked away a 26 point lead. We were up, what 24 or something like that. Um, going into the fourth quarter, we were up 18, uh, but in the final 12 minutes and 30 seconds, we were outscored by a score of 42 to 19. Um, and unlike game three, there were only two guys in double digits last night for the Sixers. Joel Embiid with a monster 37. He started out hot. I think he made his first eight from the floor. Seth Curry had 36, um, maybe his best game for the Sixers. Um, kind of a career mm-hmm. staple game Easily for him game to do that in the playoffs. Game. Yeah. And um, so now we can just kind of vent about that. Um, it's amazing how that lead was lost. Um, it's amazing how game four and game five, if we don't choke away these leads, we're looking at a gentleman's sweep, four to one. And now we're staring in the face a Friday night in Atlanta elimination game. Like, how does that happen? How does that happen? <laughs> you tell me how I, that happens. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's just that's actually a great point. You know, the Sixers had a chance to win in five, and yeah. they somehow managed to fumble that. And you're yeah. going back thinking we are currently on the brink of elimination. We have to force a game seven in order to stay in this series and make the Eastern Conference Finals. And at this point, we are not a lock for the Eastern Conference Finals. No, they're in no way, shape, or form. And even if we make the Eastern Conference Finals, I don't know how confident I am in this team. I, I need to see a lot. I need to see a total f- switch flip from this team in order for me to be like, yeah, okay, they can they can maybe put up a fight against the Nets or Bucks, which the, that game six is on right now, Bucks and six. Or Bucks yep. and seven, I guess now. Oh, uh, whatever. Anyway, um, I I'm not. I don't know how confident I am in this team right now, and I didn't yeah. think I'd be saying something like that because they looked so good entering the series, and they had, like we talked about earlier, game three was fantastic. You know, game two was good as well, but yeah. it's just like. 
Pat there was out. such a progression. I, I need from... to see. I need to see a a, a, a switch, a, a, a flip, a flip turnaround from this team. If I'm gonna be like, yeah, okay, yeah. you know, I, I'm pretty confident in this team uh, moving forward. I think they could put up a fight against the Nats or Bucks, and I don't know if I'm gonna see it either. I don't know if it's gonna happen. Yeah, uh, there there was such a such a progression from the end from the end of game one to uh, game two where we looked pretty solid, the Shake Milton game, if you will, to game oh, three, man. which was our best game of the series by far, to game four where we came out of the gate hot and then just a complete and utter collapse in game four and game five. And that progression, like, get cut. when we saw what happened in game three, Atlanta had a chance to go up 2-1, and we just dominated them. Yep. I thought the series was like, it's over. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and here we are, facing elimination against the Atlanta Hawks. <laughs> I never would have um, ever thought, and I like I, I wasn't one to be like, yeah, you know, I, I made posts about it. You know, the Hawks are a really good team. I think it'll go to six games. Never would I have thought that I'd be, or we would be talking about, a potential scenario in which the Sixers lose to the Hawks in seven games or six games. <laughs> or Total seven. opposite of what yeah. I would have thought entering this series and <laughs> up until game three and or four and five, actually. Really game four. And well. remember, and we five. talked about this series like thinking Embiid might not even see the floor early on, especially. And he's played, he's every, played every game. game. And, we and he's played really well series. outside of a second half in game four. And... We're, we're down 3-2 to the Hawks. How does that yeah. happen? So, um, I mean, let's just kind of break that down a little further. Like, yeah. literally, what has gone wrong? What do the Sixers need to do to, you know, push this series back to Philadelphia for a Game 7 where, personally, if they can go down to Atlanta and win Game 6, I'm going to be confident that we're going to win Game 7. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, don't, I won't be as confident. You know, yeah, I, you know, I don't know but. if, like, we can weigh that with anything because yeah. of what happened last night. Like, but I mean, what, what, what's gone wrong? What's gone wrong? Let's start there. Well, in terms of a surface level issue with the Sixers, probably the bench. I mean, we aren't getting consistent production from the bench. Obviously you mentioned that shake Milton game, which is fantastic. I mean, he, he single-handedly won us game three. I mean, game two, you can make the argument, yeah. but other than that, I mean, Furcon's had some nice moments. George Hill has not looked great. Who was no, supposed to be a like he did against the, the Wizards? Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, so, in terms of service level issues, the bench, and then like we were mentioning, like we were alluding to earlier, Simmons, Harris, Doc Rivers, not missing Danny Green, sort of a under the radar issue for us. Um, a yeah. lot of people thought, including myself, I guess, that we would be able to make up for Danny's production with Matisse and Ferk, but Danny Green is a much more well-rounded player than both of those guys. You know, obviously Matisse is an all-league defender, Furkan's a really good shooter, but both have glaring, obvious weaknesses in their games, and Danny yeah. Green is a combination of the two, but he's better on offense than Matisse, and he's better on defense than Ferk. So it's yeah. like you are missing a very, very big piece of your team. And Mm -hmm. a lot of, I mean, maybe not so much a lot of that, but a decent chunk of it comes down to that, I feel like. And then, yeah, I mean, if you want to just get right into it, Simmons Harris, honestly. Yeah, that's well said. I mean, I think Danny, um, you know, we can all sit here and act like, oh, Danny's not a big deal. Oh, Danny's not like, but... Again, even just a more mature player, a guy that's won back-to-back championships, like he mm-hmm. knows what it takes to get the job done. As much as like some of his games is, are flawed, as much as we get on him for his defense on Trey Young and things like that, like he, I mean, you said it, he's well-rounded. He, um, yeah. you know, he might get exploited by Trey Young, but he's not going to get exploited in a lot of other areas of his game. You know, he's uh, he can play some help defense. He can knock some shots right. down. He's he a can, constant you know, threat to help. make shots. Yeah, we don't. We're missing. And other that. guys aren't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, the the fourth quarter, particularly last night, of course, in Game Five. But 
the game, the fourth quarter stats in, in close games or games that became close in games four and game five from our quote unquote big three aren't going to win us any series. No. <laughs> jo- Joel and B- this was shocking. Like when I actually combined these, so you can see it there on the outline. Joel and B- 17 minutes in two games in the fourth quarter. Oh, my goodness. He was one for 10, and he had 10 points. So he got to the line, but he was one for 10, 10% from the floor in the fourth quarter. Tobias Harris, 22 minutes. He posted an 0 for 5 from the floor in two fourth quarters. That's not good. That's not max contract player. That is That's a not point. playoff basketball. That's disgusting. Ben Simmons. Wait, there's more. Ben Simmons, <laughs> 17 minutes from the floor in two games in the fourth quarter. 17 minutes, zero shot attempts, three total points, three of six from the free throw line, and just one assist. So everybody always, and again, I love Ben Simmons. I got a little, his little thing right here. I, but I like, love Ben Simmons. I have three of his jerseys. <laughs> ben yeah. Simmons shot the ball zero times. I get that he's not a scorer. Like, we understand that. But for him to get one assist, like, a lot of times that's our go-to with him. Like, our excuse for Ben Simmons not being great offensively is, oh, look at how many three-point yeah. baskets he, he assists on. Look at how much he helps. He got one assist in 17 minutes in the fourth quarter. What? I just, I don't know. Like, how are, we can't win games like that. That has no. to change. We're not going to win tomorrow night if that happens. Period. No. No. If it's another goose egg like this, we're done. It's over. It, it, it is literally over. We have one chance to win the series well technically two i guess if we win tomorrow but either way we're both games will be on the brink of elimination so it won't matter yep yep so what is like how i don't understand the fourth quarter thing i've tried to figure it out like even watching yesterday like i mean doc kind of says the ball's not moving enough or there's lack of movement but like how does something like that maybe you don't know i don't know how does something like that change from you know, Tobias has had great moments in this series. Ben's had great moments in the series. Joel has been awesome in this series. But, like, all yeah. of a sudden, the the quarter changes to number four, and, and that happens. Like, what's the correlation? Is the Hawks' defense that great? <laughs> no. I don't think. I think, but... I think the Sixers, I, especially their, their big three, they just get complacent, I think, is the issue. I think, yeah. I think maybe they rely too heavily on the bench, which, again – Huge issue because the bench has not been great all season. It's been good, has its moments, but you cannot rely too heavily on the bench because they are going to yeah. let you down most likely. I hate to say that because obviously we have some nice guys off the bench who do some nice things for us, Shake, Matisse at times, Furkan at times, but relying too heavily on the bench, especially in the fourth quarter when you have those big leads, it's not – you can't do that. It's not It's not going to win. Yeah. It's not gonna. It's not gonna win you games. Yeah, so, I mean, even th- this. I mean, we've alluded to it. This Tobias Harris plus four bench player lineup just ain't working. No, <laughs> it's no, just it's not, not working. Um, and and last night I think I mean Ben and to Ben and Joel I think came out together maybe at toward the end of the third quarter. The crowd just roaring. You're thinking, oh, they're not even gonna have to come back in. This mm-hmm. is beautiful ice up that knee whatever you got to do yep. <laughs> like the crowd is just pumped and i'm pumped and everybody's excited and then you know they have to come back in and and you know getting complacent taking their foot off the gas like i guess it's difficult to just think the game's over and have to come back in sometimes not that that's an excuse but i mean that's kind of what happened i think you think it's over i remember i was listening yeah. last night to um what the NBC Sports, like the main Sixers uh, channel, like after games. Yeah, NBC Sports Philly. NBC Philly. Yeah. Yeah. Mark Jackson. Yes. The dude's name. Jim Lynham. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Mark Jackson, I was listening to him, and he said uh, when he was playing back in the day, he was the he was part of the bench unit with the Timberwolves for Kevin Garnett, and there was really? a game kind of same situation. Kevin Garnett, uh, late third quarter, they're up 30, 25, whatever. He comes out. He takes his shoes off. <laughs> Kevin Garnett takes his shoes off. He's icing his knees on the bench, and the opposing team goes on a run, and Kevin Garnett has to go back out there, and they ended up losing. He was That's kind of what happened too. last night. <laughs> yeah. Mm. You know, I mean, that, like, w- they thought it was over in their head. I thought it was over. Everybody did. Yeah. That's, that's, and and now that's exactly when you get complacent. 
That's yeah. exactly when they get complacent. That's exactly when they rely on the bench too much to keep the lead. We have seen this before. In the playoffs, I think against the Wizards, probably in the regular season, they built up a huge lead. Okay, let's get lazy. Everybody gets the, everybody leaves the game. Simmons, Harris, and Bede. Oh, wait. We mm -hmm. just blew a 20-point lead in five minutes? Oh, man. <laughs> Gotta bring everybody back in now. Oh, whose fault is this? Doc Rivers. The fourth quarter offense was just horrendous. I mean, okay, it goes from 20 to 10. It goes from 10 to 7. Okay, we're okay. We're okay. We're okay. Just score the freaking ball. <laughs> just yeah. put the ball in the hoop Do one time. I, like, it, it got to, uh, we were stuck on, I think the number was, wait, what did we finish with? What was the final in that one? We got we, 106. No, when we, we had 106. We had yeah. 106. We, I swear, we had 104 for f 15 minutes, like, live, like, legit TV time. And and I don't know how much game time, but it was a long time. And, and Seth got the late bucket with time expiring. Like, what? How do you go like, that just cold? Just score the ball one time. <laughs> how do you go that cold in, the, in a game? I don't understand. And then how are you just so, I guess the word was lackluster on defense to just give the give Hawks 40 points? Yeah. 40 points, fourth quarter. Can you, can you, I mean, I'm sick to my stomach thinking the fact that our offense wouldn't have had to be any better if we held the Hawks to 36 in the fourth quarter. We would have been okay. Oh, my gosh. Think about that. Oh, my gosh. I'm just getting mad again. Really I had a no good day words. today. <laughs> I had a good day. Yes, yeah, <laughs> and now I'm upset. Oh my gosh! <laughs> um, oh my goodness! So we're kind of getting laughed at right now. Yeah, around the league, rightfully so. Ben yeah. Simmons is getting picked on from every major basketball outlet and fans. <laughs> um, Doc Rivers is getting picked on. <sighs> I just don't know. It's it's gonna take a lot from this team. I think to yeah. bounce back, not even just in terms of winning the series, but in terms of reestablishing themselves as a team that actually can win games in like timely manners and in fashion, meaning can actually close games out consistently mm -hmm. and respect respectably yeah that's gonna take i mean i don't even know if it's gonna be this season unless they really do some damage in the eastern conference finals if they make it there but it's gonna take some time now for them to reestablish themselves and yeah. you know like i mentioned earlier i need to see that because i'm not too confident in them right now no no you can't be no you just you just can't be and i just i <laughs> i saw uh post after the game they said man i would do anything to be on that sixers plane ride to atlanta oh, today just to gosh. see kind of what's going on and or even post game in the locker room yesterday. like i'm i'm curious even myself just okay the first two minutes tomorrow are gonna tell a lot of the game yeah i know that sounds silly i know it's like okay but we can have a 25 point lead and lose but the first right. two minutes just to see their attitude see how pissed off they are to see if they actually care like i genuinely want to see that because they were embarrassed <laughs> in yeah it was just every way imaginable on national tv with again a, a full philly crowd and it's gross getting booed off the court it was gross and upsetting and disgusting <laughs> and Man. oh I, there's not enough adjectives no. in the dictionary i could use all but, the adjectives in the world and when it went in <laughs> It would not accurately describe that game. So before we talk about how we're going to respond and, and, and even what we think could happen, yeah. we've talked about that a little bit. But I, I see – you can correct me if I'm wrong or you can correct me if you disagree, but I see some similarities between this series and the series we had with Toronto back in 2019. Same round, Eastern Conference semis. Um so the similarities include, if I remember that series correctly, Sixers dropped game one. The only difference is the Sixers are the home team uh, with four home games in this series now. Toronto was the home team in that one. Sixers won games two and three, one on the road, uh, and then one at home. Um, 
pretty well. Felt good. Up 2-1. Sixers are up 2-1 this year. Game four, I don't recall how big of a lead we had, but I felt good in the fourth quarter in 2019 against the mm-hmm. Raptors, and we lost that game. Yeah. Same thing in game four this year. And then game five, different ways of being embarrassed, but we were embarrassed in 2019 just like we were in 2021. 2019, I don't know. We lost. I looked at. I like. I was like, did we really lose that bad? Yeah, we lost that bad. I think the score was 125 to 89. Uh, you know what's funny? <laughs> I think I might remember. Game five that, in honestly. Toronto. Yeah, game five in Toronto. Um, Joel came out early, like at the be- like our stars were on the bench for the fourth quarter. Like yeah. it was bad, and so we got embarrassed. We got embarrassed last night, and our response in 2019 in a home game in Philadelphia in Game Six, we pretty much put it on the Raptors the whole game. Yeah. That was a good response, and you hope that that's gonna that parallel is gonna continue in Game Six. Like yeah. they looked pissed two years ago, and I get that we're gonna be on the road in Atlanta. There's gonna have to require more focus, more everything. Um, you know, more than zero shot attempts from Ben Simmons in the fourth quarter, probably uh, more than four points in a game from Tobias Harris. Like, what is that? Sorry, but uh, <laughs> Game Six, Crazy. like you you got to come out, you got to play hard, and then you know hopefully. Uh, we can reverse the curse for Game Seven, and maybe we'll get a four bounce off the rim like Kawhi got. Um, maybe yeah, I was just gonna say maybe, maybe we'll get yeah, or maybe the Hawks will hit maybe one against us. That's where the parallel stop. Yeah, hey, if maybe it will. If that yeah. happens, then that series will be extremely similar. Yeah. Um, so again, it's it's hard to know what to say, but um, how do we respond? I mean, I think, and I think I'm gonna title this episode too: "Put Up or Shut Up." Like, yeah, we got a lot good. of guys on our team that talk. <laughs> we got, you know, Ben Simmons who deflects. We got a bunch of stuff. We got Doc Rivers who says, yeah, we're coming back for game seven. You can say Pretty it all you want, good. man. I got to see it. We all got to see it. I don't, I don't know. I, I, the, an- the answer is I don't know because like you mentioned, you know, there's a lot of talk coming around. Oh, you know, we're bounced back. Tobias Harris, all our bags against the wall. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you can say that you yeah. you can say that all you want, but until you do something about it, don't say anything, or just you know acknowledge the mistakes and talk about it. Hey, you know I I really messed this game, or I really I really suck tonight. Yeah, that or don't don't say things like that because then you play and you get stomped on. Looks bad. But honestly, I would yeah. just say, I mean, can they turn it around? I don't – like, definitely it's possible. I'm not even – I'm not going to say I expect anything from Simmons, at least not right now. I'm, I'm tired of expecting things from Simmons and not getting anything at all because I've done it and I've – and honestly, I, I've done it in this in the season, in the playoffs, and I haven't gotten anything – I haven't seen anything after I expect things from him. So I'm not expecting anything from Simmons because – when he does, if he has a good game, I won't care because then he's just gonna go back to his old ways. He'll have one good game and that's it. I need to see it consistently, and until that, I'm not expecting anything from Simmons. Embiid, I mean, I can't really expect anything from Embiid. I know what he's gonna do. He's gonna drop 30, 35. Hopefully, not miss clutch free throws. But yeah. that's not that's not usually what Embiid does. So I'm I'm not expecting that again. I think Tobias Harris is. I think he'll have a good game. I think he'll have a bounce back game because that's who Tobias Harris is. He hasn't had many bad performances in this season so far and in this postseason. So I'm expecting yeah. a nice bounce back game from Harris. Um, obviously, like I said, he's not excluded from the slander. He did play horrible last night. He was trash <laughs> last night. Yes. However, again, I will say I think he'll bounce back. That's because that's the kind of player he is. He he's he's been playing amazing this season. All star snub. I agree with that. And. And he's been great in the postseason. He's won the first round. He averaged like twenty five and ten on really nice shooting. That's the that's who Tobias Harris has been this season. So I don't think I don't think this game was a very telling for him as a player. I think he'll be good. And then, I mean, I hope I don't see that much from Seth Curry. It would be great, but that's not who Seth Curry is. He's not a, he's not a thirty six point guy. That's. I don't think I've ever seen Seth Curry score that many points, which is crazy no. because that just well, goes to show was... you how much load on offense this man had to carry because yeah. Simmons and yeah. Harris wanted to poop the bed. But <laughs> yeah, outside of <laughs> outside of that, 
I mean, I just want some some bench production, and if we can get Shake and Ferg to maybe play consistently like good bench players, in addition to everything else that I mentioned, uh, who knows? Maybe it'll, maybe things will turn around. Maybe we'll. I don't know there's a lot of uncertainty right now <laughs> maybe things will turn around there's so much there's so much uncertainty uh, uh man uh, yeah I, I agree 100 percent with tobias harris i mean he's been great all year yeah. not trying to hate on him he you know he's not free from what he did yesterday right. but like that's not know, who you he don't is. expect that yes. from him yeah it's not it's not and, and i agree i think he'll bounce back um i think another key is is the rotations you know yeah. yet again i mean we can't just come in here and joel Embiid goes to the bench and during a five minute stint we, we're losing by 10 we can't afford that yeah. we can't afford that yeah. at all we can't afford him to have a plus 30 and when he's off the floor to be a minus 45 yeah. that's another parallel to the raptor series i think when he was on the floor in that series we won by 100 when he was off we lost by 100 it was yeah. similar to that like it wasn't that far off um yeah. So I mean, why can't our? I mean, look what Kevin Durant did in game. What was that? Game five. Tuesday. Game five. Yeah. Yeah. Game five. He played. He played every minute. He dropped forty nine. He had a triple double. Dude, I watched this that game. Dude, oh my gosh, the shots this he was dude hitting. Had, what the Achilles injury? Oh my and gosh. He's older than our star players. Why can't our guys play forty five minutes? <laughs> like, it's time. Like, I want to see something different. I want to see Ben Simmons if he's playing well to stay in the freaking game. Dude, Kevin Durant back. Yeah. Go ahead. Backboard threes, pull up jumpers, post ups, fadeaways from Kevin Durant on Tuesday. It was like, it was it was magnificent. It was it was crazy. Yeah, he was lethal. He was lethal. So. Um, yeah, I think we can't leave the bench in too long. We can't play an all-bench lineup. I don't even want to see four guys, four bench players in one starter. No. You know, Doc's got to – I hope he's working on that right now in this hotel room. Like, okay, how can I keep Seth and Embiid out here with three bench players? How can I keep Ben and Tobias out here with three bench players? How can – you know, like stuff like that because we've seen over and over and yeah. over again this bench squander leads, and so it's – our back is against the wall, quote Tobias yeah. Harris. Like, stay on the floor. Quote Tobias Harris, literally. <laughs> so, that's key to me. I mean, I, I, I think that's I think that's it, man. Put up or shut up. Let's go. Um, I, I'm, I'm curious how I'm going to wake up tomorrow feeling, if I'm going to feel confident or if I'm going to feel nervous, whatever it's going to be. Um, <laughs> the one thing that's different oh, from the Raptor man. series two years ago is that we're supposed to win this series. We weren't supposed to win that one. We're supposed yeah. to win this one flat out this yeah. and, and they we'll were the get into this we're especially three, right yeah yeah i think something like that um but i mm. mean we there's there's no reason we should lose this series and if we do we're gonna have a lot no. more to talk about and Not there's gonna all. be changes there's gonna be things that are gonna be different and so um there's gonna be sure. but hopefully we changes. don't get there hopefully we don't get there uh, I have a stat of the day because I'm the plus Pretty minus close. guy. Because this, this, I don't know how anybody is talking about this. I don't know if I'm like looking at something wrong or if I'm reading this box score correctly. Game one, the Atlanta Hawks had zero starters with a positive plus minus. Game five, the Atlanta Hawks oh. had zero starters with a positive plus minus. That is two games that the Atlanta Hawks oh. won, and they had zero starters with a positive plus minus. Wow. Where has that happened in any other playoff series? Like this year, year before, year before. Like I've never, I don't know, but no one's talking about it, wow. and that's significant. I, I yeah, I did not hear about that. Wow. Two of their three wins in this series, no starter with a positive plus minus. That's crazy. Doesn't make sense. Yeah. Oh my gosh stat of the day but that shows you probably likely that shows you how much their bench unit is outplaying our bench unit yeah it's yeah, got to it's got to be a great point that's a great point so <sighs> okay all right anything else <laughs> no i mean every taking into account everything we said i'm really just hoping that this was a very very big wake-up call for 
the Sixers, mostly everyone besides Embiid and Seth Curry. Yeah. And I hope things turn. I hope things get turned around. And if they don't, you'll be hearing from me for sure because I will be absolutely <laughs> livid. And I will. I might cry. I don't know. We'll see. I might cry live some, on the podcast. Some, we, you know I, mean? I don't know, but I'm really hoping that things turn around because I know that this is not the Sixers and who they actually are. We've seen how yeah. good this team can be. Game three, perfect example. The Wizard series, amazing. Game two, I, I mean, kind of, somewhat. It, but it's just like they are they are the one seed for a reason. They they played through injuries. They played through all this stuff, all these weird scheduling things to get the number yeah. one seed. They, they pushed through. They have the talent. They have everything. They just need to play like it. Yeah. And until I see that, like I mentioned a couple times. For four times, quarters. I'm not going to be confident enough in this team moving forward. Yep. Full disclosure, we are Sixers fans that have a Sixers podcast. And uh, some episodes, you just got to tell the truth. <laughs> yes. You have to just tell like it is because you can be a Sixers fan and just be objective about it. You know, I, I try and be objective in my points of point of views and in my, in my posts and things like that on this podcast and whatever I do with the Sixers because no need to sugarcoat things. I'm going to stand by what I say and the things I, you know, things I say and just try and be as honest as possible. Yep. No doubt. No doubt. Um, I think that's a wrap. This is Planet 76. Go Sixers. I hope our next episode is talking about the Sixers matching up with the Nets or the Bucks in the Eastern Conference Finals. That's the dream. That's the goal. Now put up or shut up. You just listened to an episode of the Planet 76 podcast. Hey, we appreciate you joining us for this episode. Whatever platform you're on, why don't you hit that subscribe button for us, and we'll see you next time.